Welcome back to True Stories with me, Sherry Weens. I hope you guys are staying safe and keeping your masks and social distancing. We are still in this together, folks. Let's do our part. Have I got a story to share with you? If you are interested on how to protect yourself better from some online dating con men or con stay tuned for this story. involves a man named Simon Leviev. Now, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, I'm probably botching the name, but he's gone through several alias names um, to date. He was born uh, Shimon Hayat in Israeli in September 27, 1990 in a, in a town called Ramat El Chanan, Ne Brak in Israel. He very quickly, as a young adult, and I mean between the ages of like 10 to 15 years old, started um, misusing other people's credit and committing check frauds and stealing credit cards and going on spending sprees kind of thing in the beginning. So Simon was born in Israeli and he ended up moving to Brooklyn, New York at the age of 15 with friends of his families. Um, he would help with babysitting their five-year-old and it was actually in this home where he had misused a credit card and this particular family had accused him of such activity. Now after finding out, after figuring out that he was in pretty big trouble, he decided while the family had left him in charge of the five-year-old child that he wasn't going to stick around for the punishment. And he left the five-year-old unattended and took off and ended up going and changing his name to I Nisim Tapiro. I think that I've got that kind of close, but regardless, he had created a fake passport in order to flee to Europe. Some reports, um, he had stolen a checkbook belonging to the family as well, and he was in fact charged with that theft in 2011. He was charged with theft and forgery and fraud for cashing stolen checks. In 2012, he was indicted by Israeli courts and charged with theft and forgery of checks, as well as leaving the five-year-old unattended. In 2015, he was arrested in Finland and he was sentenced to three years in prison for defrauding several women. To be an Israeli man born in 1978, meanwhile he was really a man born in 1990. Um, and he was found with two forged Israeli driver's licenses and passports and uh, forged Israeli flight permits and American Express cards and all kinds of other, you know, incriminating evidence. After finishing his sentence early, because of course he got out on good behavior, he returned to Israel to be recharged and sentenced in 2017. However, according to the Times of Israel, uh, he was assumed under a different identity by changing his legal name to Simon Levyev and uh, fled the country again. He had several aliases, Mike, Michael Bilton, which is kind of oddly close to Michael Bolton, but anyways, he used Michael Bilton and uh, presented himself as a son of a Russian-Israeli diamond mogul Lev Levyev. Using the dating app on Tinder, he created a profile and he just started looking for women who were well-to-do and had been taking care of themselves, some of them older, some of them younger, but the main part of importance for him was that that they they had wealth that they had some money and finances to their name what's shocking about this guy is that he would meet a woman 
and then whine and woo her, if you will, and and treat her as, like a princess, you know, taking her on private jet, taking her to a different country for a meal, um, lavish spending, lavish hotels, lavish everything, um, driving lavish vehicles, and just really, really living a life that made it look like he had a lot of money. Meanwhile, what he was actually doing was swindling money out of other people and then turning around and using it on someone else. So here's how that, that worked. He would meet somebody and then wine and dine them. They would fall for him and within a month, there was some kind of a catastrophe or some kind of an event that created that um, he needed to borrow money and that he was very well off and, you know, that they should trust him and, you know, he would he would be able to get that back to them and then some not to worry. And because of the way that he had treated them and because of the whining and dining, they had assumed that he too had money. And so they, in turn, would turn around and give him thousands this guy literally swindled like upwards of 10 million dollars out of various women so he would take that money from one woman and then he would meet another woman and he would use that money on her to wine and dine her and then he would turn around and meet somebody else and use that money on somebody else and he just had this huge ponzi scheme of basically taking advantage of women who had taken care of themselves and were you know in in a decent place in their own life financially and and whatnot and take advantage of that now these women were smart these women decided to team up and really catch this guy because not only was he a really good con man he was also um you know fleeing to various countries and committing these crimes there and then going and getting on a plane and going back to another country where he had met another woman and you know continuing from there basically if if and these women they they like they were they were not stupid like these women actually googled and did research and got information as to whether or not his story checked out and of course they found that it did um, they saw photographs, but of course those photographs were photoshopped and he was in on turn not to be even related to the Diamond family where the Levev family of, of diamonds and that enterprise he was trying to make himself look like he was a part of and he was the son of. Meanwhile, he wasn't even a part of that at all. And so these women would research this and see that his story seemed to check out, but um, everything fell apart literally shortly after meeting. So my biggest tip on this story, folks, is I think it's best to not just trust what you see when you're searching. There is alternative routes of action that you can take, such as actually contacting the place that this person says that they either work or they're a part of or this is their family reaching out to that person or that family or those people or that company or what what have you is probably the next best step to protect yourself against somebody being able to to take advantage of you or to fool you if you will right i mean if someone's able to take themselves and put them in, in a picture that they're not actually in and make it look like, you know, they're, they're a part of, of something that they're really not. There has to be another recourse of action so that you don't just read it, look at that and go, okay, I trust what I'm seeing because anybody can put anything on the internet, really. So you, you should do a little bit more work, right? And search into whether or not what is actually posted and what is actually, you know, being told is actually the truth so i was shocked to see this and if you guys have not seen it yet on netflix and you have netflix check it out the netflix series is called the tinder swindler so be careful folks it's a dangerous dating world out there and i really wanted to share this story um not only was the two women that teamed up together able to catch this guy but they were able to make sure that the face that he was conning everyone with and the names that he was using were no longer going to be able to be used and he he literally went down so the ending um and i really i i don't want to ruin it but i have to say a little bit here the ending of the story is is amazing because even at his lowest when he thought 
everything was over and done, one of the women came back to him and said, you know, I can help you fix all of this because he was out of money. He was out of people to con. Things were coming out on the internet and on in news, radio and, and television. So, I mean, he was being outed. And in all honesty, um, the, the woman that went back to him and said, oh, I can help you. She remembered that this guy lived such a lavish lifestyle that his entire wardrobe was designer wardrobe and worth a fortune. And so didn't she offer to come down to him? And she ended up loading up three huge suitcases, brought them back home full of designer clothing. And she's literally still selling it to this day right now as we speak, which I thought was like, Good for you. Like, let's give a round of applause because, you know, to, and not only that, but she never was planning on giving him any of the money from any of the sales. She was planning on re regrouping some of the loss that she had to take because of him taking everything from her. And I mean, he got her to take out credit cards and finances and loans and all kinds of things all the while, you know, continuing to promise that it's going to come back. And even at one point, sending a check that was like a hundred thousand dollar check but the check was fraudulent and it wasn't even you know anything and so they're waiting for it to clear in the bank account and it's not it's not even a lawful check so i mean she's still out all of her money and there's no amount of you know the amount of clothing that's going to be able to make up the amount of money that she had lost but it is a little bit of a you know, pat on the back, gratitude that you're getting something. And I mean, she's selling those designer clothes for really good prices. So to cap this off, Simon is still wanted in three countries. He's wanted in Norway, in Sweden, and the UK, despite being released from prison in Finland in 2015. So all of this has come to light. And I mean, it just happened in the last decade. If you guys haven't heard of it yet or hadn't seen it, I definitely recommend checking it out. And I thank you for watching True Stories with me, Sherry Weens. I will definitely see you guys again soon for another true story. Stay safe out there, folks. Bye for now.